you're all probably wondering, you know, detail of what this is all about, and hopefully we can give you a few answers. The key thing is it's about recording heritage assets which aren't currently designated. So that's things which aren't currently listed or scheduled or, or, or hopefully known about, really. So we can find out a bit more about the heritage of Clay Country and Red Roof. The project runs until the end of December this year. So that gives us a few months to sort of go out and find interesting um, you know, buildings, sites, monuments to actually put forward for consideration for local listing. It's carried out via a web um, app, so a map mapping interface where you can look on a map and sort of click on things. So hopefully a lot of you will already be familiar with that kind of interface and we'll go through it in a bit more detail in a minute. And then all the things which are actually agreed to be put on the local heritage register are recorded on the project website and the council's online mapping system and historic environment record. And the key thing is it helps us understand, appreciate and protect the historic environment of Cornwall. So essentially we need as much help as possible from all the people in, in not just Red Reef and the Clay Country, but also within Cornwall to go out, find and record our heritage in the project areas. And I think you know there's probably a few questions about where is Clay Country and where the boundaries lie. Um, we're we're kind of really sort of hemmed in to some extent by parish boundaries. So, you know, you may be thinking, well, actually, I think Clay Country goes further north than that, or it's actually further south. But so that we can actually put things on the computer, we're using the parish boundaries as shown, um, just to sort of give some clear boundaries as to where we can sort of um, um, survey for assets. Um, Red Ruth as well, we're really looking at the main urban area of Red Ruth. Um, and again, there should be, could be some questions about that, but it's really trying to tie it down to that area. And this will be shown on the, um, the web app and I'll show you later where you can find this. Um, I think the crux of it is thinking, you know, you've got words like heritage assets, significance, and a lot of you will probably be familiar with those, some of you won't. Essentially, a heritage asset is a building, a monument, like a piece of archaeology, a site, place, area or landscape which is identified as having a degree of significance meriting consideration in planning decisions because of its heritage. So that can be a number of things, but I think the most important thing is thinking about it a bit like a spectrum. So you'll have a variety of different types of assets, but also you will have um, different levels of importance. And what we're talking about here essentially is above a certain level of importance. So I've just put in two here. I've got a cannon at Polcaris. Uh, and we've got land hydrock at the other end. So you might have something which is important enough to be considered at, at, for at the local heritage list at the one end of the spectrum, right through to something of you know huge importance in terms of its architecture and history. And there's you know gradations between the two. And why we're doing it is really to make sure that we know about heritage. You know, there's I could have put forward so many slides here of things which are interesting, but perhaps not entirely obvious and have been lost. Um, this was Ethel Colkin's um, artist studio down at Le Morna, which is something which, you know, was really um, not obvious as a heritage asset, but actually really, really important for Cornwall and perhaps nationally as well. So we can look at different types of assets, so buildings like this old clay dry, archaeology like these World War I practice trenches, Parks and gardens, um, there's going to be registered parks and gardens which are already designated, but also an awful lot of things which aren't, which are going to be of interest. We can technically look at areas as well. We're not necessarily doing it as part of the pilot, just because of the amount of information that has to be put forward. But if you think of a conservation area, you could technically do something which was an area based uh, um, designation as part of the local heritage list. And whilst we haven't got anything in the project area because it doesn't go below the high water line, um, you can actually technically look at shipwrecks as well, which could be really, really important in terms of understanding some of our maritime heritage in Cornwall. So thinking back to this idea of local listing, we know what a heritage asset is. So we we know, yes, it's a, it's a building, it's an area, it's a piece of archaeology which has heritage importance. So local listing, I think is probably a bit, bit of a misnomer. Um, I put up a picture of Charlestown here and there's going to be lots of things in this picture which aren't actually listed. 
um, but which perhaps have you know, national importance. If you think of the, the cycle between producing the clay and processing it and bringing it down to the docks and then the process involved in shipping it around um, and all the sort of maritime heritage, there's this huge cycle of, of, of process involved with that. And there's going to be lots and lots of things in the picture which um, are you know, hugely important but might not actually be scheduled or listed or, or or considered. So I think local listing is perhaps a bit of a misnomer in, in that it's it's more about a level of importance. So um, the national sort of descriptive term is technically non-designated heritage asset. And there's our very, very boring government um, um, definition, which says, it's a, it's a building, monument, site, place, area or landscape identified by plan making bodies as having a degree of heritage significance meriting consideration in planning decisions. And it does say which do not meet the criteria for designated heritage assets. And that's not strictly the case because you could have something on the local heritage list which is worthy of listing or scheduling, but just hasn't been considered. Um, so don't pay too much attention to that. It's more about it being above a certain level of importance.